So picking up <coughs> where we left off in the last tutorial, we measured an outside wall area to the outside edge of that external leaf at 218 meters squared. I'm just going to show you um, a way to manipulate that measurement without having to start it again. So I'm just going to right click and copy this dimension. So right click the actual dimension, copy dimension group, and I'm going to call it inside face of external leaf. So a slight change there in terms of the measurement. Um, I'm going to bring it into the inside face of that 100 millimeter outside leaf. And click OK. So I haven't changed um, the folder this dimension is in. It's going to be exactly the same because I copied it from the outside wall area. So it's showing there at 218 meters squared. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hover over one of the lines and I'm going to drag and drop it by pushing down and holding the left click button and bring it in and releasing um, that left click. So do the same for each wall. Hover over it, it turns green, pull it down and there release. Do the same on the other side and release. And then there's the last side obviously because it's square. I'm going to drop it on the inside face. So I've changed um, that dimension from 218 to 212. And subsequently, all the other secondary quantities have changed. Hover, hovering over that dimension, I've got a length of 58.2, a wall area of 157 meters squared. If I check the others, they'll be slightly more because obviously I've reduced that area and subsequently I've reduced all the other dimensions associated with it. Um, <clears throat> that shows a way of adjusting the line dimensions. I'm going to move on now to the GFA, short for gross floor area, and I am going to change, I'm going to measure both the ground floor and first floor, gross internal floor areas through the walls, um, through the stairwells, etc. because that's essentially what the gross internal floor area represents. I'm going to click point mode, so I'm changing from line mode, which is what I use measuring those two dimensions, to point mode, and you can see that now I've got a kind of blue dot that wants to stick to points and lines on the drawing. I can actually turn off that kind of sticky cursor by clicking geometry. And now I can select points or any place on the drawing. Um, but ultimately it's not as accurate because I can't actually get right on that particular point or corner I want to. So I'm just gonna turn that back on. Um, it may be useful in some instances, but right now I'm gonna turn back on geometry and dimensions. And I'm gonna start with this corner. And I'm going to click on the inside face of that internal leaf, measuring the gross internal floor area for the first floor, or sorry, for the ground floor. Um, again, you may need to zoom in a little bit. If I want to select a point along that line that isn't actually an intersection as such, so I'm just going to click, click that. Um, Maybe that I, I made a mistake there and didn't come down far enough, so I'm going to click backspace. Um, it goes back a step and try and get at least where I think the connection is. Um, come across to the other corner, zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to keep the inside face, the block work, rather than the render or plaster. Um, so essentially, I'm getting the internal floor area. Um, again, I'm going to come down. Clicking the inside face. I'm going in one direction, it could be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, it just won't work if you hop around the drawing, but ultimately if you follow the line, um, it works just fine. It doesn't really matter what direction you're going. So again, let's say I made a mistake like that. I can just backspace, retrace or backtrace essentially the mistake I made and finish that area off. So come back to that first point by clicking back on the point and hit enter. So now I've got um, an area of 197.46 meters squared. So the reason it's showing there is 197 because it's just below 197.5 and it'll round to the nearest whole number. Um, so essentially there I've got an area for my ground floor measured through the internal walls and I'm going to do the same for my first floor in this particular building. I've got a void here in terms of double height space to the workshop and on the first floor I've just got a, essentially got this corner area here. So again this one's a little bit easier. Using point mode 
I might, ooh, now you can see I made a mistake there, so I'm gonna backspace and adjust that line. Over to the other side, click, and then come back to where I started. Now I did the other direction there, I went anti-clockwise instead of clockwise, and it works just fine. So my gross floor area, in fact it should be gross internal floor area, is 239 meters squared. Click dimensions tab here beside dimension groups, and I'll see my two dimensions. So if I just hover out, clicking the first one, 197, it turns blue, clicking the next one, 41.56, it turns blue. So I'm just gonna change the names from 001 and 002 to first floor and then change 01 to <coughs> ground floor now I don't have to do this um, I'm just being a little bit pedantic but it just kind of labels my measurements um, in the other measurements I essentially just had one dimension so it'll just show that one dimension but because I have two dimensions here on my drawing or on my sheet um, I've got two dimensions in there in the dimensions tab but I have to click the dimensions tab to see the breakdown of those dimensions. Um, now what I'm going to do is just going to show you an opportunity once you've completed a dimension rather than having to redo it if you've made a mistake you can actually manipulate that dimension by adding points. Now I can only do this in point mode, I can't do it in line mode. Adding points to one of the lines. So I'm going to just maybe come around this store area here to show you that um, I can manipulate that dimension. I'm hovering over one of the lines it turns green, or at least the two points on either side of the line turn green. I'm going to add a point. I'm going to hover over. Oh, again. I'm going to hover over another line, add a point. And I'm just going to add a few points along that line there. Add a point. So you can see I've added one, two, three points there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and bring that point down to there. Bring that one into there. May even this one, bring that one into that corner. And I may need to add one more. Right click, add point, and then bring that one down. So you can see there, I may need to zoom in a little bit more and get the actual corner and the inside face of that block work rather than the render. Um, and essentially I've manipulated that dimension to exclude that store area <coughs> it gives you an opportunity just to maybe change that dimension after the fact um, again I can delete points by hovering over the point it turns green and then I delete point I don't delete the dimension I'll delete, delete the entire dimension I'm just going to delete the point again right click delete point um, and in fact I don't need that one either delete point um, and essentially I'm back to where I kind of start I'll zoom in again delete point so I'm back to <coughs> what my original measurement was it's just a way of manipulating those dimensions um, moving on from that I'm just gonna check double click my GFA yeah I have a default height in there is 2.7 meters um, that's fine just to show you that in 3d click drawings and you can view your dimensions in 3d just to get an indication of the wall area, the ground floor, the perimeter length, what that entails. It's just a kind of a quick way of um, seeing, I suppose, your dimensions in, in 3D. I can't measure in 3D as such, um, but I can just view my dimensions just to see what it looks like with the DT default height essentially um, on that area. So I'm gonna click back and I'm gonna add another dimension in here. I'm gonna click um, dimensions tab across the top add a dimension group like I did in the previous video and I'm going to add a ground floor area dimension keep it in standard uh, measurement type area um, leave the default height I might just change the color doesn't really matter what color I'll keep my negative dimension that's my, essentially my positive dimension I'll keep my negative dimension as red and I'll click insert and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and measure essentially my ground floor area again, similar to the GFA and the inside face of that internal leaf. 
So again, if you just be patient while I do this again, maybe a little bit of practice for you guys, no harm. So zoom in, it's about right there. I'll zoom in again. And I'm just following again along that inside face of that block work. No different than what I'd done before. In fact, I could have copied the dimension and deleted the first floor area, and it would have been just fine, just changing the name of the dimension. Um, but again, for a little bit of practice, it's no harm in doing it again. So you'll notice I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out as I need to move along the drawing or move around the drawing. Again, if I made a mistake, I would backspace and I suppose correct the mistake I made and I'm going to come back on to my first point try and click right back on it and click enter so again I have that 197 meters squared and if need be I can manipulate it if I made a mistake um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deduct out the um, area that the ground are supposed that the internal walls make on that ground floor the reason i'm going to do that is because i'm looking for an area that will represent you know sand blinding insulation uh hardcore fill the concrete slab in the floor um, and they don't go across because these have their own internal foundations so they'll butt up against those internal walls so in the gfa i won't do that because the gross internal floor area is designated as an area that measures through those walls but <clears throat> when I'm looking for an area I can use maybe in my substructure element I do need to deduct out the area of those walls so again I'm going to stay in point mode but I'm going to select negative here in the dimensions tab and I'm going to try and break down um, the area of this into maybe a number of sections um, I can't necessarily do it as a complete so I will need to break it down into a number of sections. Click down here. Zoom in a little bit just to get that line. So just be patient with me because this will take a little bit of time. And then back on the first measurement. So a slight little angle there. I might just hover over that dimension and bring it down a little bit. You bring it down to 90 degrees. I may have done the same over here. Um, again, I'll do the small 100 millimeter walls. my next section hopefully this will complete another area for me and that's returning to the first point so that's two sections as such um, and then maybe my last section here so starting there corner corner Keeping it on the inside face of that block work rather than on the render or the plaster. And then my last section, three sections in total, back to the first point, click enter. So now you can see there's a reduction in my area from what was 197 now down to 192. I'm going to click both here just to see both my positive and my negative dimensions. When I click the dimensions tab here, I should see my full dimension of 197.45 and then my deducts. So that section is 2.78 meters squared, smaller 0.77 meters squared and 1.62. Something I didn't show you before, if I feel um, I want to adjust the dimension, again, maybe just the positive dimension here. So I'm just going to select that positive dimension and I want to maybe retrace or redraw without having to do the entire dimension again. I can hover over one of the lines, select right click 
once it's selected and uncomplete area. So basically it'll give me the opportunity to kind of go back through that measurement um, to the point I maybe made the mistake and then redraw or re-click on the lines I want to re-click on. Now I've essentially just completed that same dimension again um, but you can alternatively um, change that dimension um, to correct it in a manner that uh, is more reflectant on, on what the proper dimension should be if you made a mistake. Um, so again you right click on a line, hover over a line, right click, uncomplete the area and essentially redraw that. So it's another way of I suppose manipulating that measurement after the fact um, rather than having to redo it again. So you can either delete points, add points or uncomplete the area of that of that dimension. Now that can only be done in point mode not necessarily in line mode. You can uncomplete um, a dimension in line mode but you can't add points essentially to that line uh, takeoff. Okay from an educational point of view um, in terms of the educational software that Costex provi provides one of the most important things especially in uh, DIT Dublin Institute of Technology is that we export our building um, every every time we work on it. So we create a copy of that building. Now that's important because more than likely you could be working on different machines or different desktops in different labs. Um, and the lab computers or the Costex educational uh, license on each one of the lab computers can only hold four buildings. So if you think that your building is gonna be there again, the next time you turn up at that particular desktop, it'll probably be deleted because there's plenty classes using Costex. Um, so the best thing for you to do is to export um, pretty frequently the building and keep a copy. Now, don't keep exporting the same name. What I would suggest doing is changing the name of the building every time you work on it. Um, so what I might do is top left hand corner, I would um, show building properties and I may change the name to warehouse you know, 02.1 or 03, whatever the version I want to create or maybe even the date. If that is grayed out and you can change the name of your building, what you need to do is go top left hand corner, Costex options, rename buildings. Make sure that is selected, otherwise you can't rename your building and then go and do it again. So show building properties and change the name. My last building name, I suppose my first video was Warehouse 01 or Warehouse. So maybe change this to Warehouse 02. Click Update, and then you need to essentially export that building. So top left hand corner, Export, Export Building to EXF, and click Select. You should have the name of the file, Warehouse 02, and click Save. Just be careful when you are exporting that the name here in the building you're selecting is the same name up here. There is sometimes it may select one of the buildings that is in the system that isn't the one you're working on. It's a little, I suppose, um, point to, to note because it can then, you select the wrong building and it'll overlay, I suppose it'll save that building and you may have lost your measurement. So just make sure that that's selected as Warehouse 02 and click Select and then click Save. Um, in this case, you may save to your G drive or your Z drive in Bowdoin Street. So click save. Click OK. And there's that building saved. So thank you very much. We'll see you in the next tutorial.